Released for the Game Boy Color in Europe on June the 30th, 2002, with a Japanese release following in August, and an American release in November of the same year, we have Dragon Ball Z Legendary Super Warriors based off the popular manga and anime series by Akira Toriyama. Developed by Ban Presto, who also published the game in Japan, the European and North American releases were handled by Bandai, now Bandai Namco, and Infogrames. The game is a card-based strategy game and is not to be confused with some of the earlier Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z games, which used a different card battle system. If you're not familiar with Dragon Ball Z, then watching or reading it is recommended to fully understand some of the names and terms used in this review. For those of you familiar with Dragon Ball Z, the game begins after Goku's death by sacrificing himself so Piccolo could kill his brother Raditz in the Saiyan Saga, and runs right through until the end of the Buu Saga spanning 30 in-game chapters and two bonus chapters. Some chapters have an overworld map where your character can wander about and talk to people, as well as finding hidden cards, while others require you to fight an opponent in a turn-based card battle system. But is the game any good? Find out in... The Good. The character roster for a Game Boy Color game is quite impressive, with 27 characters, 47 after you include transformations, available from throughout Dragon Ball Z. For the first playthrough of the game, you play as the heroes, unlocking some as you go through the course of the game, and fighting the villains with the heroes available during that point in the series. The second playthrough allows you to pick any character to fight the enemy in the story, and is crucial to unlocking the rest of the characters. There are some creative ways to unlock some of the characters, such as having Super Saiyan 2 Goku losing to Margin Vegeta once, then beating him to unlock Margin Vegeta for use in the game, to even unlocking bonus chapters which is achieved by using Vegeta to defeat Perfect Cell after he returns. There's even subtle story details that change if you select a certain character to fight a battle, such as the Vegeta vs Cell match, or if you have anyone fight Cell at the start of the Cell games being a little different from if you fight him with Goku or Gohan. You can even be disqualified from the World Martial Arts Tournament's Under-15 division if you pick anyone else aside from Goten to fight Trunks, despite young Gohan being the correct age. Each character has their own stats, as well as a set of moves that they can use, with some gaining very powerful moves that require two characters to use. Characters can also gain levels up to level 5 and get stronger the more you use them, by allocating points for each level to their stats. The large character roster, combined with the methods to unlock them and their moves, really added to the replayability factor of the game as well as the challenge. The card battle system in the game is also surprisingly deep. The battle system is split into two phases, an attack and a defense phase. In order to perform a lot of your attacks, as well as using support or guard cards, you'll need to accumulate command points. These can be obtained by using 3 to 6 stage attacks, which require you to press the buttons within a set amount of time. If you successfully pull it off, you'll get points equal to the stage attack you selected. During the defense phase, you'll gain 3 command points if your opponent uses a stage attack, or more if you're hit by a special attack. There's also a support card which can also aid in getting command points that can be used in either phase, although I recommend using it during defense. Support cards have a variety of effects, such as healing your character, or increasing or decreasing a character's stats to name a few. There's even some cards that have the capabilities of instantly killing your opponent if you're lucky. Guard cards can either reduce the amount of damage taken from attacks, to preventing or avoiding the attack altogether. Even your positioning on the map is important, as you're much more vulnerable to physical attacks on the ground, and more vulnerable to beam attacks in the air. The further apart you and your opponents are, the less time you'll have to input commands for the stage attacks, so you can increase the time you need to make the button inputs at the cost of being more vulnerable to damage. Each character has limit moves as well. These moves are traditionally signature moves that you can assign to characters such as Goku's Spirit Bomb or Vegeta's Big Bang Attack to name a few, and you can access them when your character powers up. As well as getting a minor boost to stats, any command based attacks, if it knocks your opponent in any direction, will physically move them on the map. However, you can only be in a powered up state for two of your turns. The more complex battle system also adds to the replayability factor of the game, and really adds to the strategy by allowing you to build your deck around your playstyle. Unfortunately, as good as these things are, there's also some stuff which isn't so good, and we're going to start covering them in... The Bad. The AI in this game I found to be a little on the predictable side, and can be used to your advantage. In most instances, if the AI moves forwards, they're most likely setting up for a 4 to 6 stage attack. And if they start gathering power, they'll generally use a 5 stage attack first, before using a special attack on the following turn. The AI will also use a special attack when low on health, in a desperate attempt to defeat you, or at least deal a large amount of damage to you. On the plus side, the AI does get a little smarter in subsequent playthroughs, and Margin Buu, regardless of playthrough, is very notorious for using the Breath Guard card to stop your energy attacks. 
While I do like the leveling system to get stronger in the game, I feel that the experience points needed to get from level 4 to level 5 is a stupidly huge jump. While I can reach level 4 with 50 experience, one battle needs approximately 1 to 12 experience points, the requirements for level 5 is 500 experience. This can be achieved by winning 70 to 80 battles in battle mode, which pits a character of your choice against random opponents until you're defeated. The grind from level 4 to 5 unfortunately does get quite boring, as the opponents you're up against in battle mode seem to come from a certain pool of opponents based on your character's stats and transformation stage. Now this issue is mainly present in the European version of the game, which is the version I'm reviewing, but the translation is all over the place. For some unknown reason, every instance of the word death or die, present in the US version, has been substituted with lost or losers, which makes several sentences make no sense, such as before I lost again and prepare to lost be notable examples. Yet the game has absolutely no problems with an attack named suicide. There's also some inconsistencies in plot and naming things such as the hyperbolic time chamber being called the Room of Soul and Time, which is its Japanese name, or calling King Kai's planet Neptune for some stupid reason, which was also present in the US version. As funny as the translation is, it does show a lack of quality assurance in checking the script for inconsistencies and errors. Other than that, that's all I really have to say here, so now it's time I give... The Opinion. Dragon Ball Z Legendary Super Warriors is a really fun game. It follows the story of Dragon Ball Z quite well, and being able to replay the story after completing it with any character you want certainly adds to the replayability factor, whether you want to unlock all the characters or get all the cards. It does suffer from the odd issues, mainly with the European release suffering in terms of its translation, though I hear the Spanish translation is even worse. But overall, it's still a very enjoyable game, and definitely one to play or have in your collection if you don't already especially if you're a Dragon Ball Z fan. So with that, it's time for my rating. I would give Dragon Ball Z Legendary Super Warriors, and because I like this so much, prepare to lost out of 10. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next Infinite Backlog Review. If you enjoyed today's review, feel free to check out some of our other videos and subscribe for more. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram and our Facebook page. Once again, Thank you for watching.